working computers. They're easy to use, and they're fast. You want to buy one? Don't know. Don't buy one. <laughs> Apple changed the way they advertise. They started with why. Instead of selling from the outside in, they started from the inside out. Apple says, we change the status quo. We believe in doing things differently. We just happen to sell computers. They're elegant in design, they're easy to use, and they're fast. Now do you want to buy one? Maybe not. But it's more inspiring, isn't it? How about as a leader, how can you apply this? Um, we have, uh, how many of you have looked at the SOP? Couple. Looked at not order? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the RTI has SOPs and orders written in that Times New Roman font. A year and a half ago, uh, almost two years ago, uh, the Army says we're not using Times New Roman anymore, we're using Arial font. So I'm going to like, you go ahead and update all those? Sure. Awesome. Do you think Sergeant Emily is going to be excited about that? <laughs> if we reverse it, kind of think of like, think like Apple, if we say, we are the RTI in Minnesota. We want to be in the forefront of everything we instruct. We want to be the best at what we do. And anytime someone says, I want to send someone to a recovery school, I want to send someone to OCS, MSLIC, we want them to know they come to the very best place. All the way down to the most minute detail of what font we have in our SOP, that we have in our op orders. Sorry, Emily, could you help us be the best school? Is that more inspiring? Our SOP is still times two. I know. In case we let get out that throw. Second retired. It's just a it's it's a change of perspective. It's just doing in reverse. Dell seven years ago tried to sell MP3 players. Generally, I don't even call them MP3 players. I call them iPods just because that's just how well they branded the market. They failed. They were faster. They had more <coughs> space on them. They were easy to use. They could not sell them because they were selling that they were faster, that they're easier to use. People don't stand in line for six hours for a Dell MP3 player. People stay in line for six hours to be part of what's new, changing the status quo. That's how Apple does business. And if you apply that to leadership, that's going to help you out. Um, this works not just because people say it does. It's not opinion. It's biology. It's actual how we are designed as people. So think about this as the brain, which my brain is a perfect circle. <laughs> well, the outside here is the neocortex. Anybody know what the neocortex does? How it works? Couple people. So you see what does. Uh, neocortex is responsible. It's the newest brain. It's responsible for rational thought and analytical thought. It also handles language. It has zero decision making ability at all. Inside, center two circles, the how and the why, is the limbic brain. Limbic brain handles emotion change the status quo. Is that an emotional thing or an analytical thing? It's emotional. Emotion is like trust, like um, loyalty. You, as a leadership, you want to just give out uh, direction. Or you want to build trust, build loyalty. Sometimes someone will come to you and ask you if you want to buy a product, buy a house, buy a car. And you don't know why you don't want to do it. Say, I just have that gut feeling. I just don't want to. Because the uh, limit part of the brain that handles emotion doesn't have language. It has zero language ability. That's a gut feeling. Your guts actually don't make decisions. Your heart doesn't make decisions. Your brain does. <clears throat> so when you're selling ideas, when you're leading, that is uh, a, a bio or yeah, it's biology. That's why it works that way. 
Um, the Army tells us to uh, you know, task and purpose. What if you just to switch the two? Get purpose and then task. It's the same thing, just in a different order, right? What you're doing is you're getting people to believe what you believe. So I'm going to switch gears, hand out some paper. There's two sides. One side has lines on it, and the other side is, is blank. Um, everybody take the blank side and draw a pig. What breed is that? Anybody else need more? On the blank side, not on the blank side. Anybody have a writing stick? This is. <laughs> and you're a farmer. Hey, I just eat them. Okay. It's our ambule. Very nice. His name is Porky. Okay. And I'm watching this table here. This is like an angry pig, but it's a pig. All right. So now we're going to draw it again. We're going to give you some different direction. So, uh, this side of the room we're going to give written instruction to. For about our remainder of our This side of the room, we're going to grab And you're going to read the instructions to everybody who doesn't have written instructions. So, read the paper and now do it on the line that <coughs> I, I think an infantryman who we all know uses small words and uh, grunts a lot is a good example of verbal. So if you don't have the written instructions in front of you, you're listening to Sergeant God. 
right? Everybody you to hold your paper like this, parallel, and then set it down in front of you. Like this. Written instruction, go ahead and start drawing based off your written instructions. You got it good there. You look in the left hand corner, or your left top left hand box, and you go to the right to the first line, where the first line, first two lines intersect. Okay? Put a circle there and a one. In the left to the left of the dot, the top left. Dot. Oh my gosh. It's a dot. Oh, so it's a I put a circle in. Seriously? That's fine. That looks great. Okay. You're doing a good job. How many centimeters on one? It looks good. Now go to the right, the next intersecting line. You put a, a dot circle there, filled in, and write a number two with the two to the right hand, to the top right hand side. Straight down from the two to the next intersection, do a dot circle, right a four in the lower right hand corner. And well, just the lower right of your dot circle. Move over to the left, go to the next intersection, <laughs> dot circle, put a three in the lower left. Okay. Now that we've established that, draw the letter M with the bottom center of the M touching point number one. Draw the letter M with the bottom center of the M touching point one. Draw a letter M, probably, probably bigger than that. I think Sergeant Worthal will probably have a very good example of it. Probably want to use up all the space in that box. Oh, great. Now, I don't even have a picture of what it's supposed to be. I'm just reading the instructions. Shut up. <laughs> all right, draw the letter W with the top center of the W touching point three. <laughs> yeah, it's funny how this side of the room is doing a pretty good job of just following simple instructions. Okay, draw the letter W with the top center of the W touching point four. <coughs> Alright, is everybody caught up so far? Alright, now draw an arc shape. Arc shape. Something like this. Rainbow. Yeah, kind of like a rainbow. On arc shape from the far right side of the letter M to point two. Draw an arc shape, kind of like a rainbow, from the far right side of the letter M to point two. Yeah. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, pork sausage. Draw an arc shape like this from point two to the top right side of the W at point four. Is everybody there? Now we're going to draw an arc shape that will look like that, or more like a smiley face, from the top right side of W at point 3 to the top left side of the W at point 4. Oh. 
works out. Now, draw the letter O in the center of the middle of the left box. Don't even know. Uh, draw the letter O in the center of the middle left box. The middle box on the left hand side, draw a circle. Our left hand side. Now, draw an arc shape like this from the bottom left corner of the letter M to the tangent of the circle. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Draw this arc shape from the bottom left corner of the letter M to the tangent of the circle. Draw an arc shape from the bottom left corner of the letter M to the tangent of the circle. <laughs> Alright, everybody there? Perfect. Now, we're going to draw an arc shape like that from the W at point number three to the tangent of the circle. Specific expectations equals piss poor leadership. 
if you give specific guidance, and you want this pig right here, you kind of have an idea now what you need to do, whether it's written or verbal. They were written down from actually somebody else. And that somebody else, sorry, Goff, who didn't even know what the expectation was, was able to communicate what was wanted. The, th the thought I have on this is, if you want this specific outcome, give specific input. If you want to allow for creativity and innovation, and give somebody ownership of having uh, created something new, and they're going to come up with something probably better. But it's up to you as a leader to manage your expectations and to know what you want the outcome to be. If you want this, and you don't give good instruction and you get this, should you be upset? No. Manage your expectations is, uh, I guess, the point on that. So I want to go back to the initial question I started with about the babysitter. How many of you thought in your heart that the person you would pick was the 34-year-old across the street that you didn't know, but with 10 years' experience? I probably want to find out from that. Maybe get a little more information? So how many of you thought the 16-year-old with zero babysitting experience is probably the one you would trust? What's the key word in that? Trust. Why do you trust them? Because you know them. Why else? Know their parents. Yeah. Because you're part of that circle, that, that safety circle, right? You know them, you trust them. It goes into the why. It's the emotion part. So we talked about the gold circle and how that can be applied, not just sales, but in leadership and how you're going to, uh, how you can apply that. That goes to the influencing uh, purpose and motivation of 622, part of the five fundamentals. Now you can go to 622 and read what the Army says about the five fundamentals. I thought it was a nice way to give you a different idea. When giving direction, think about the thing. I liked the creativity here. But if I wanted, oh, that, <laughs> I would give different direction, right? Think about that on when you receive things from your leader. What do you want? What is your expectation? Right? That's your leader's your customer in, in that type of in that type of environment, right? What do you want? Understand the voice of the customer. Understand the voice of what you what people are asking of you. If you do, if you take the uh, fundamental of the gold circle, and you take the fundamentals of drawing pigs, the fifth fundamental of uh, improving the organization will happen. If you believe, or you have other people believe what you believe, and you can communicate that well, it's just going to happen. Does that make sense? That's it. That's the end of the class. Uh, Sergeant Ambul is going to run the AAR. Unless before that, does anybody have any questions? There's a sign in roster going around. Okay. Please sign before you take off. Sorry, name. The, the inside circle, what was that part of brain? Was that? Why? Oh, the limbic brain. Sorry, you want to on, on paper, it'd be fun. Okay. All right. So, what was supposed to happen?